Welcome to the Leadership Levers Podcast. I'm your host, Will Gladhart, CMO at The Culture Think Tank. Our Culture Think Tank community is committed to advancing workplace culture and well-being. We are a virtual hub for authors, investors, leaders, managers, and employees worldwide to connect, engage in candid discussions, share ideas, and explore resources for cultivating a healthy work environment. We're here today to learn about the actions leaders have taken to address cultural change. Our guest today is Paul Fiovortini, CEO and Managing Partner of Corvell Partners. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us today. I thought we would start by having you share a little bit with our audience a bit about yourself and your organization or your background. Well, thank you for having me, William. Uh, my name is Paul Fioravanti, and I'm the CEO and Managing Partner of Corval Partners. We're a 27-year-old advisory firm headquartered in Naples, Florida, and we were started in 1996 by my late partner and mentor, Jim Malone. Jim was a six-time Fortune 500-100 CEO, and uh, for 27 years, we've been helping businesses with a variety of challenges. Thank you so much for sharing that. So we'll be discussing three questions today, and I'm curious about your responses, because since you have such a wide background in, in working with CEOs and a variety of companies, um, as a warm up to start our conversation, would you share why you believe a healthy culture is critical? Well, uh, again, just to reference Jim for a second, one of my, my favorite quotes that I learned from him was about culture, and it, it it goes like this, culture is determined by the worst behavior that the organization tolerates. Yep. And when companies are going through struggles, it's normally in three areas. It's typically financial, operational, or it's some issues related to sales, marketing. In some cases, they don't have a sales team or they don't have their, their marketing kind of dialed in. But fundamentally, culture is really what determines results. And often that is a shadow of the leadership or shadow of the ownership. So what do you see as the biggest challenge leaders face when addressing cultural change within an organization? Or are there any challenges that you've specifically faced in your own organization? Well, we work with a lot of other companies. So our business is really helping other businesses. And personally, I've been involved in almost 90 engagements and probably almost 40 industries. So you get the opportunity to kind of see a wide swath of organizational challenges. Uh, and this is a range of you know smaller companies up to publicly held companies, in some cases, international businesses. I think the, to sum it up, uh, culture is, a, is really an independent variable. It's an input. And in any kind of input in an organizational system determines an outcome or results. And if the company has a poor culture for whatever reason, it really affects the the employees and the company and the stakeholders in, in many different ways. Sometimes it's just as uh, as simple as poor morale. I've come into organizations after particularly tyrannical leadership where uh, the employees have uh, essentially, you know, they're suffering with PTSD. And they're really struggling through, uh, you know, what are, what are their roles? What is the direction? And in some cases, I've left organizations uh, much better than I found them. And then they bring in somebody that doesn't have the background to run the organization and they wind up back where they were before. And that's really, uh, again, a shadow of the leader problem. And I, I think the opportunity for organizational leadership to leverage culture is to treat people with respect to lead by example, to be the hardest working person in the room. And again, it's sort of the, you know, the golden rule, you know, treat people the way that you want to be treated. I really appreciate you sharing that. I think, you know, we we have seen some instances of just like you have of working with organizations where the prior leadership, you know, really valued culture you know, the values of the organization, the st you know, staff you knew everybody by name, even though the company was was fairly sizable and, you know, new leadership stepped in and it literally just, you know, people started running for the exits because it changed so dramatically. And then that leadership was replaced by another set of leadership that didn't quite understand the company. And then finally, two leaders later, they found the right fit. I think you bring up that 
again, the behavior of the leader impacts every piece of the organization and, you know, every from top line to bottom line all the way through. So what do you think that leaders can do to address these particular challenges that they are facing either around culture or, you know, whatever they're struggling with? Well, one of the things that we recommend, and and this is going to sound sort of basic, but (laughs) um, gather with your people, right? Have town hall meetings. In many of the companies that I've worked on, I I would bring in lunch either once a week or in some cases every day and gather with the employees and talk through some of the issues. Like you really have to connect on that level. And, you know, one of the challenges with uh, private equity owned businesses and hedge fund owned businesses is sometimes there's a lack of maturity by the operating partners and they they some kind they sometimes come at the uh, organizational challenges from a position of uh egoism right they speak down to mm-hmm. people they they think that you can kind of browbeat and you can just you know cut cut and shrink to greatness and profitability that never works you have to connect with people you have to treat them well you have to ferret out the most critical information I can think of countless examples where the real nugget of truth that the operational strategy relied on to fix the business came from those long-term employees on the front lines, whether they're in you know manufacturing or some other area of the business. They know what the right course of action is. In some cases, they just clam up because the culture is such that they're they're sort of browbeaten, right? They're they're not treated well, and and their their opinions are not respected. So one of the common ground things we do is uh, every every month we would recommend reading. We we you know have initially we'd give them certain books that we want them to read. Uh, like some of the go tos are uh, Good to Great by Jim Collins. Um, my face. <laughs> lean for dummies. If it's a manufacturing environment, it's amazing. Like people could spend 30 years in manufacturing and they have no concept of lean or what that methodology is. Most of it came out of Toyota because no one's ever led them and taught them. But, you know, there are a variety of, of books that we would recommend. And then at some point it would switch gears and the employees would start to bring forth books. Like in some cases it would be, hey, you know, I read this book 20 years ago and I had a great boss. And and read between the lines is they don't think that the boss they had before he came in to transform the organization was any good. So and no one's ever, you know, asked them to share their perspectives. But again, even just having sort of a, you know, de facto book club to talk about things they've learned. uh, You know, one of the things that comes out of the Collins book is the right people in the right seats on the right bus. Right. So, again, it's management is not as complicated as, you know, one one would believe. And I think, again, you have to understand your stakeholders and and get the nuggets of truth about the business that you're running. I I really appreciate you sharing that, but I also appreciate you commenting and sharing about some of those experience about the VC, you know, equity back type businesses that, you know, it, it can be a real struggle if the individuals that are funding that entity or organization do not have the maturity and also the ability to lead culturally. Um, cause I, I love that you pointed out that you can only cut so much or you can only, you know, cut back so much. Is there any, because we do have some in our audience that are not only CEOs, but angels, VCs, et cetera. Um, you know, you've shared kind of around that idea. Is there anything else that you, people in that particular space might be able to do to further help their organizations that they work with or have in their portfolios? I think, you know, again, one of the obvious things is study the competition and find out what works. And oftentimes, uh, management, governance, leadership, ownership, they're reticent to let go of things that don't work. And I think you can learn from successful people and, you know, the flat, fast, nimble, customer centric organization is where it's at, right? And just, you know, building hierarchies, having too, you know, unwieldy of a span of control, too many layers of people. People have to be clear on what they're doing. And I always try to cu- cultivate a culture of it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission, because if uh, in particular, if a CEO is, is hamstrung himself or her, herself by having to raise his or he, her hand every time they have to go to the bathroom and get board permission, that organization's never going to go anywhere. No, I think those are some really great insights and thoughts that can start to uh, help leaders better understand not not only how to lead, but how to lead other organizations that they may be working with. So is there anything else you'd like to add today, Paul, before we wrap up? 
No, I just think that, uh, well, maybe one point. I, I think uh, 24 is going to be an interesting year. I think there are going to be some challenges. Um, you know, obviously post-COVID, um, a lot of the liquidity in the market has dried up. And I think that uh, you're going to see a lot more uh, distress in the first and second quarter, uh, which also provides opportunity. I think there are going to be a lot of distressed opportunities for acquiring entities uh, either in their same industry as uh, strategics or financial buyers, funds, uh, PE groups, et cetera. I think they are experiencing some challenges as well. Um, some of the recent acquisitions in the last five years were bought at very high multiples and very high levels of assumptions. And uh, some of the some of those chickens are coming home to roost, as the saying saying goes. Well, I think that's some sage advice. So, Paul, I've enjoyed having you on today. Thank you for, so much for your thoughts and your insights. Really appreciate it, William. And uh, best to you for the the holidays. And hope you get some time to relax and enjoy your family and friends. Thank you for joining us on the Leadership Lovers podcast. You may find all our Leadership Lovers episodes in our Culture Think Tank community at www.culturethinktank.ai. Join the community at no charge and tune in weekly as we invite leaders to share their experience in strengthening culture one action at a time.